Morning. This is Our Lady of Victory Church on North Avenue in Talmadge, Ohio, broadcasting via FM Radio 93.7, also live streaming via our parish Facebook page. We are about to begin the celebration of the 11 a.m. Mass for the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. A reminder to anyone who may be praying with us from the parking lot, at communion time, a minister will come out to the covered walkway to distribute communion to anyone praying with us from the parking lot. At that time, please come forward to receive communion, then kindly return to your vehicle for the remainder of this celebration. For any unable to come forward, once those who are able have done so, then please drive up to the covered walkway, and a minister will bring communion to you while you are in your vehicle. Again, then simply return to your spot in the parking lot for the remainder of this celebration. Thank you, and we will begin shortly. Once again, good morning everyone and welcome. Let's stand and sing together as we gather at your table and it's number 311. Oh, 
And so we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We come together before our God, mindful of God's love for us, mindful too of the times we have denied that love, the times we have sinned, and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. <coughs> Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to us in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest until it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly, and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first offense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation may be completed, and all the Gentiles may hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like the tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. You may recall that this past weekend, we addressed the significant question that Jesus posed in the gospel. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Now, it led to some important thoughts about prayer. Prayer that by its very nature demands faith, some faith. A faith that helps us to watch, 
faith that helps us to wait, a faith that helps us to be committed and convicted to not missing for a single moment God's hand at work in all of life around us. With confidence and with trust, because God will act. This week in Luke's Gospel, we continue with prayer. And now we see two individuals, certainly not allies of each other, in a particular setting. Both in the temple to pray at the appointed time, and both actively engaged in prayer, conversation with God. The fact that the Pharisee is praying in the temple should come as no surprise. That's what Pharisees did. They prayed. They followed the law. They were responsible for setting a good example for others as to how to live out their relationship with God and in fidelity to the law. A relationship with God and with Judaism that was supported by their regular fasting and their paying of tithes to the temple treasury. What is surprising, what is surprising is that the tax collector is also praying in the temple. Now yes, the tax collector would have most likely been Jewish, but as a tax collector, he was connected with the Roman occupiers so that business to support them would be transacted through him. Tax collectors were also notoriously viewed as, as being dishonest in their dealings, whether that was with Rome or whether that was with their fellow Jews. And if they followed the law, it was more kind of like a, a menu, you know, something from column A, something from column B, as would have been fasting and the paying of tithes. But still, Still, he was in the temple praying. Of course, a much different prayer than the Pharisee. It almost begs the question, whose prayer was more genuine? Whose prayer was more sincere? Whose prayer was more authentic? The Pharisee or the tax collector? Knowing what we know and just a simple reading of the text would probably have most of us cast our vote for the Pharisee, not the tax collector. Yet Jesus, who sees and knows what's in the heart of both of them, what's in our hearts, states clearly, I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former with justified, meaning here, accepted by God. And the latter, the latter is none other than the tax collector. It appears that the Pharisee was not justified, not accepted by God, again, based on just a simple reading of the text. And perhaps if that's the case, well, maybe it was because of his lack of humility. But friends, there's another possible outcome that really is surprising. It is possible that both went home justified. Both went home accepted by God. You see, from, from what I understand, the word not in the original Greek can also be understood to be read as because of. I tell you clearly, the latter went home justified because of the former. Wow. Not only does prayer matter, in this case, the prayer life of the Pharisee, but how one lives their life matters as well. The tax collector went home justified, accepted by God, being helped by the goodness of the Pharisee. If read this way, then it's clear that, that, that prayer, not just that of the Pharisee, but our prayer, yours and mine, matters. Our faith matters. Our good actions and works, yours and mine, matter. God using them and giving them the power to transform the life of others but also continue to transform our own lives. 
which is why we must never stop praying. We must never stop gathering for prayer, especially the Eucharist. Never stop giving of ourselves so that all that we treasure, all that brings us comfort in times of distress, peace in times of unsettledness, hope in times of darkness, continues. Never solely for our own benefit, but for the benefits of others. For we are all connected to God and to one another. Recently, I, I was with some of our servers, and I shared a story with them about my own personal spiritual journey that for me puts flesh and blood on the importance and the power of this connection. In sharing it with you, it's, it's my hope that whether you're gathered here or not, it may touch something in you as well. Now, it's not unusual when I'm meeting with others that this question comes up. Father Mike, what is it that you like most, your most favorite thing about being a priest? Now, I certainly list a variety of experiences that are favorites. But there's one experience in particular that isn't confined to priesthood, but rather is really accessible for all of us. Now, I know that there are probably those who wonder just why. Why, after the distribution of communion and, and Father is busy about working to clear the altar and purify the vessels, while everybody else gathered is already in their silent mode, offering either personal prayer or, or just simply being silent, perhaps even wondering, when will he finish so that this can end and I can get on to my next thing? Wondering, just why is it that he returns to the chair and sits in silence? Now, certainly, practically speaking, I do that so that I can enjoy what everybody else has been enjoying. That personal, even private time with the Lord. But you see, there's really another reason. And in truth, it's one of my favorite times in the Mass and the celebration of Eucharist. It's at that time that I experience and feel the Lord really and truly inside of me. I, along with you, have taken him in in communion. And his very life has started to move through my human body, but in ways that are mysterious, yet ever so real. My heart beats, and I know that it's him who flows now through my veins. My mind seems to grow with his presence. My eyes close, and I see him. I see him, and I feel him in my arms and in my hands, and I feel his arms and his hands stretching out to you, connecting with you in a real way. Arms that gather us all together, holding on to one another because we have all just taken him in in communion. And for those moments, I believe that we are most perfectly the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. Much like Peter on the mountain that day of the transfiguration, I want to build a tent. I want to hold him fast in that so that he doesn't leave. I want to hold on to that experience. I don't want to open my eyes and I feel as if I could sit there in silence for hours and be as happy as I can possibly be on this side of eternity. My friends, we, you, me, and others, we are connected. We are called to sustain and grow that connection always through our prayer, through our faith, through our good actions and our works through the giving of ourselves so that all that we treasure continues to benefit others and give glory and praise to God. This week, each household will receive our annual parish mailing that not only shares information about your parish, 
over the past fiscal year, but, but serves as an invitation to recommit and renew, and perhaps for some to commit for the first time to supporting your parish through the gifts of time, talent, and in particular, at this time, treasure. Well, I'm well aware of the challenges that so many continue to face these days, not the least of which is doing all we can to make certain that the good news of Jesus Christ and his gospel not only continues to be shared, but is shared with even greater intensity, greater passion. Whether the impact of COVID or the impact of far too many believing that, that life is about comfort and happiness now and eternity has somehow found its way to the bottom of the bucket list. Yes, we've seen a change in parish. We've seen a change in church, what it looks like as has nearly every Christian denomination I know of. But friends, we must not give up. We must not back away from our call to sustain and grow the gift God has given us to share, which is why the giving of time, the giving of your talent, and the giving of your treasure is necessary. We are connected. We help one another to fulfill the mission that's been entrusted to us by the Lord, to love God, to love others, to become and make disciples. One of the startling statistics noted in the mailing that you will receive is the fact that over the past fiscal year, as you know, we continue to live stream on our parish Facebook page, all masses, weekday, weekend, holy day, all other prayer opportunities, and on the weekends and holy days also broadcast over 93.7 FM. One of the startling statistics is this, the Sunday Masses and Holy Day Masses alone have had over 13,000, nearly 13,500 views. 13,000. 500 views. Certainly there are those that suggest that live streaming and broadcasting were providing a means for many to either be disengaged or continue to be disengaged. I would suggest that that's really not mine nor yours to judge. Based on Blessed Carlo Acutis' use of social media to spread the gospel and promote the gift of Eucharist, Social media has become, in fact, a way for us and others to reach others to do the same. Through our live streaming and our broadcasting, seeds are being planted and must continue to be planted as well as we need to find other means to reach those beyond these walls. Oh yes, we may not see the fruit that's produced or harvested, but I believe, we believe, fruit is being produced, and ultimately it will be harvested. My personal prayer is that we not become a community of faith that merely maintains, but one that grows stronger. And this will happen with God's grace, God's guidance, and each member's support. Next weekend is our recommitment, renewal commitment weekend. A personalized commitment card is included in the mailing along with an envelope to return it with. I ask that each household take the time this week to pray, pray about what that commitment will be, and then to complete that card. Cards may either be mailed back to the parish center offices, dropped off at the parish center offices, or returned next weekend, commitment weekend placed in baskets that will be near the entrances of the church. Each and every household is asked to respond, even if at this time a commitment is not possible. Remember, in terms of treasure, what's being asked involves strictly your regular Sunday contribution offertory. Not the special collections or second collections, because it's the regular Sunday offertory, that contribution, that really provides the fuel to drive the engine we know as perish. And know that no amount is too little. 
as in the past, there's also an option to make a one-time contribution at this time. We continue to encourage all individuals to make use of Faith Direct. It's a means of providing consistent and regular financial support. Information is also included in the mailing about that. Pamphlets are on the carts near the doors of the church. For those who are current Faith Direct users, remember only you can go online or contact Faith Direct to change your offertory amount. We cannot do that, are not able to do that, and would not do that. Friends, we are connected by so much, but in particular, Jesus Christ. Together, let us pray for this important annual initiative. And may God continue to bless us all and provide us the grace, the strength, and the means to continue to build on the past nearly 78 years so that we grow in our strength to carry out the mission of Jesus Christ, a mission that's been entrusted to us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. and contrite spirits, let us approach God with confidence in prayer this day and always. That the church may not presume to be righteous, but seek to humble itself and to exalt others in the love of the compassion of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations and governments may work toward peace, justice, and equity between one another and for the people they serve and establish a just environment where all human life is protected and reverenced, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who feel beyond God's mercy may find their prayer and hope in the tax collector's words, and those alienated from Christ and his church may return, welcomed by people of compassion and love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That candidates and all of those inquiring into the faith of the church, along with our candidates for confirmation and the reception of First Communion, may continue to find in us and in others a true witness of discipleship. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may always su surround with loving care the elders of our community who have blessed and enriched us with so much. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That each member of our faith community may respond to God's invitation to be generous with all our gifts of time, talent, and treasure as we respond in faith to strengthen and grow our community of faith. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and suffering.
suffering, especially George Ann Bain, John Chartrino, Bob Christian, Michael Curry, Mary Damico, Mike Firth, Doug Fox, Daisha Furtney, Jerry Holinak, Julianne Jenkins, Jerome Keller, Tom Lorkowski, Sister Mercia Madigan, Joanne Pizzi, Book Brooke Russell, Carol Skelly, Ken Shoemaker, Paula Simmons, John Von Guten, Bob Wakeman, Clara Wydas, along with the victims and survivors of clergy sexual abuse in our church, may find strength in the Lord who looks on them with love and in the prayer and support of those who care for them and this community of faith. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died recently, Yvonne Hanna, Marco Vanek, Dushan Eskovec, for whom this Mass is offered, and all our faithful departed, may receive the crown of righteousness from the righteous Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be strengthened in the conviction that the Lord reads our hearts and minds for the needs not mentioned, for those written in our prayer notes book, and for those we have been asked to pray for through our Renewal Recommitment Initiative. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. With you, O oh God, there is no partiality. And yet you assure us that the prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. Look upon us who come before you, humble and repentant like the tax collector. And grant that, as we open our hearts to trust in your steadfast love and mercy, we may be justified in your name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our operatory chant will sing Jesus, meek and humble, and it's number 517. Jesus, me and all.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teaching, we dare to sing, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. <laughs> Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering to God. Communion chant, let's sing together Bread of Life, and it's number 354.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, we continue to thank those who give of their time, their talent, and certainly treasure to support your parish's mission and ministry. Uh, all love users, remember to use the collection boxes at the entrance of the church. Uh, do not forget your bulletins. There's uh, a couple important inserts in there, as usual, this weekend. Take fives are at the uh, entrances of the church as well. I wish to extend publicly, it's in the bulletin as far as I know, but uh, just a thank you to the Knights of Columbus for a wonderful spaghetti dinner last Sunday. Both many of you, if not all of you, took advantage of that. And certainly to the presence of the Ladies Guild who were there, who were kind of like kicking off their um, upcoming bake sale and uh, Christmas tree raffle, which I'll talk about in a moment. One of the inserts in this weekend's bulletin uh, deals with what we spoke about in terms of music ministry, trying to uh, grow that um, and information on that as well as on the other side, information about Priesthood Sunday, which is next weekend, and a day of fast and prayer for priests this coming Friday. Church will be open, so do check those pieces out. There's also an insert in there about a grandparents gathering, um, so pay attention to that. As has been previously announced, the Ladies Guild is having a bake sale the weekend of November 19th and 20th, it includes a raffle of a Christmas tree that's on display in the front vestibule, and tickets may be purchased in the front vestibule following this mass. Um, Life team, just a reminder, grades 9 and 10, that will gather tonight in the Parish Center at 5 p.m. And next weekend for our, our middle school and high school youth is an All Saints Day party uh, on Saturday following the 5 p.m. mass. That'll take place in Trinity Hall, go to about 8 o'clock. Uh, see prior inserts for more information on that. Also next Saturday at 4.30 p.m., Rosary will be prayed in church to kind of conclude uh, Respect Life Month. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And we'll say, bless the Lord, 10,000 reasons, and it's number 561. Thank mm -hmm. you. 